All right, today we're going to continue our study of gases. Specifically, we're going to look at two things, the ideal gas law and Avogadro's law. And you may remember that name, Avogadro, from when we did Avogadro's number. The ideal gas equation. Um, what is an ideal gas? It's really a hypothetical gas whose pressure, volume, temperature, and behavior is completely described by the ideal gas equation. You're like, what is an ideal gas equation? This is it. PV equals nRT. So the only thing you don't probably don't recognize here that we haven't covered is R. R is called the universal or the ideal gas constant. The value of R depends on the pressure, the volume, temperature, and the number of moles. But it is a constant, and it's usually, and we will use it throughout the problems, and I will always give you this value as well. So for an ideal gas, it, is, it does not always accurately describe a gas. Ideal gases usually exist when things are approximately at one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius, and we know those conditions do not exist. But we'll use that to describe gases in many situations. So the ideal gas law, let's do a problem here. What is a pressure exerted by 0 0.66, I'm sorry, 0 0.622 moles of nitrogen gas at two liters in, in a vessel at 100 degrees Celsius? Well, the equation we're gonna use for this is PV equals nRT. Now how this is different from any of the other equations we've used is that right now we only have a gas in one condition. Previously when we've done problems, we've had gases where we varied pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles. And this time we haven't varied any of those. All we do is have we have one gas and basically of the four conditions, pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles, one of those values is missing. So we see here what we have on this problem we have we have N, the number of moles, we have V, the volume in liters, and we have T, the temperature here. Now of course with the temperature we need to do what we did before. We always need to change the temperature to Kelvin. So since we're looking for this, it's asking for, for pressure in the question, we're going to rearrange the formula so we get pressure by itself. So we say pressure is equal to nRT divided by V. Now we insert the values. The, we've got the number of moles times what I have here is the R. The 8.31 is a universal gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin. Now we want to divide that by the number of mole, uh, by the volume, which is 2 liters. And notice when you do this, your liters will cancel out uh, because liters is part of the volume, but it's also part of the universal gas constant, the R value. The kilopascals cancel, uh, does not cancel out. That's the one thing that does not cancel. Moles will cancel, and then the temperature in Kelvin will cancel. So the only thing that doesn't cancel out is the unit within the gas constant, which is what you're looking for. In this one, we find the pressure is 964 kilopascals. And if you were to do this problem in atmospheres, you would have found it was 9.52 atmospheres. Either one of those would be acceptable. So the other type of problem we're going to look at is when we do Avogadro's law. Now with Avogadro's law, pressure and temperature are held constant. So let's see what happens to this formula if we hold pressure and temperature constant. So we get rid of pressure, we get rid of temperature, get rid of pressure on both sides and temperature on both sides. And so we're left with a formula V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Remember V is volume, N is number of moles. And so basically this is sort of illustrated by the balloons. If we have one mole of gas and we increase the number of moles of gas, the volume of the gas increases proportionally. So for this one we actually double the volume. And when we double the volume, we also double the number of moles. Now you might recognize this is Avogadro, Amadeo Avogadro. He was an Italian scientist who actually came up with the idea of the mole. And he did a lot of his experiments with gases. He found that gases, if held at equal conditions or the same conditions, had the same number of particles. So when we're doing many of these problems, we could assume that the gas is carbon dioxide or nitrogen because they're going to take up the same volume regardless of what gas it is. So the other type thing is if you were to graph volume number of moles, how do you think that graph would appear? And this is what we see. Avogadro's law, if you were to graph these, there is what we call a direct relationship. As we increase the number of moles, the volume increases proportionally. So you can see here in the graph, they double the number of moles and the volume doubled as well. So that's what we call a direct relationship. So the question is, here's a question with Avogadro's law. 
if we have 0 0.00901 moles of neon gas and it occupies a volume of 242 milliliters, what volume would 0 0.00703 moles of neon occupy under the same conditions? So for this, we're, we're using a form of the, we're going to get rid of this. We know that um, pressure is held constant, so we don't, know that, don't need that. We know temperature is held constant. So basically, we're going to have V1 over N1. And once again, pressure is not used and temperature is not used. So we get rid of both those. And then we have V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. And so if we rearrange this equation, we'll say V2, which is what we're looking for, we're trying to find the volume, is equal to V1 times N2 divided by N1. Now we just need to insert our values. And so we end up saying 242 milliliters times the initial number of moles, which is 0 0.00703, divided by the, final, the initial number of moles, which is 0 0.00901 moles, the number of moles cancel. And when you multiply those out and divide, you get the final answer of 189 milliliters. So one thing you might be thinking about, how do I know which formula to use? Well, important thing to look at is for the top form or any forms that come from this, you have a gas in two conditions. You're changing pressure, volume, temperature, or number of moles. You're changing one of those. Down here to the ideal gas law that we study today, there's really only one condition. Pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles have not changed. You've not increased or decreased the pressure, increased or decreased the volume, added, taken away number of moles, and it's not been heated up or cooled down. So there's only one condition. So if you have a gas under one condition, and in the ideal gas law, three of the four variables should be given, or you have a gas under two conditions, you have the one, one form of the gas law, which is written above. Now, the other thing we've talked about is a, a law of partial pressures, and that's simply when you add the, the individual partial pressures of the gas, and that's equal to the total pressure. So that's a quick summary of the gas laws we'll be using. Uh, good luck, and we'll be working on some of these in class.